Hi everyone, today we are in the second and final part of a short letter written by the Apostle Paul to a believer called Philemon. Today we are in Philemon verse 12 through to the end of the, the letter, the end of the chapter. Uh, just a quick recap of this letter. I know it's been recapped before for you, but uh, in case you're just joining us, this is the story of how relationship with Jesus restores relationships that are broken with others. I, I say that with a slight degree of caution. Not every relationship should be restored. If that uh, relationship is uh, damaging and abusive, for example, and we see here in this letter that restoration requires um, the work and commitment of, uh, well, all three parties. I know they said all two parties. It requires the work and commitment of the two people in relationship, but also the power of the spirit, God's spirit at work in that. He is committed to that. Now, Philemon, we know, was a wealthy Roman citizen from Colossae. He met Paul whilst he was in Ephesus. Paul led him to Jesus. He became a follower of Jesus. We know from Colossians chapter 1, 7 that when Epaphras plants a church in Colossae, Philemon plants that church with him. So he is a mature believer, a, a leader, a church planter. And Philemon had slaves and one of his slaves was called Onesimus. Now, slavery in the ancient world, um, just as a little important aside, uh, slavery in the ancient world was really different to um, what we might view slavery as modern slavery over the past hundred years or so, a few hundred years, uh, which was about racial domination and superiority. In, in biblical times, it was quite different. It's estimated in the Roman era, maybe as many as 50% of the population were slaves. It's how society functioned. And of course, yes, there would have been widespread abuses of slaves, but, but many free people voluntarily sold themselves into slavery um, for economic gain. It, it was often for a, a limited period of time, quite different to how we view slavery these days. I suppose I'm saying that... Um, what I'm saying is that I do not believe that the Bible supports slavery. Certainly not slavery as we understand it today. For example, the, the, the evils of the transatlantic slave trade, the, the modern slavery of human trafficking, often children and women in the slave trade. Uh, the Bible condemns those things. And um, indeed, it's often been people who have read the Bible and have encountered Jesus and the love of God that have fought to, uh, against those forms of slavery. So, um, so let's bear that in mind when we read this story of slavery in this passage. But here in this passage, we have um, one of Philemon's slaves, Omnisimus. Onesimus has wronged Philemon. Maybe he's stolen from him. We don't know. He's run away. He's escaped and maybe in desperation, he sought out Paul, who at this time was in prison, in chains, writing from prison. Omnisius receives Jesus. He becomes Paul's assistant. And now Paul is writing to Philemon to say, Philemon, I want you to forgive Omnisius. I want you to welcome him back into your household, into your oikos, not merely as a slave, but as a free man, as a brother in Christ. It's a radical story. And, and really what we are seeing in this drama here, I, I suppose it's like a dual level drama, a two level drama. There's on the, this story that is echoing and mirroring a deeper story, the gospel story, the story of grace where our relationship with God the Father is restored because Jesus, our advocate, settles the debt that we owe to God and we are now no longer slaves. We are no longer slaves. In fact, we become family in God's household. That's the story at the deeper level. It's been said that this letter Philemon is the only letter that Paul writes where he doesn't talk about the gospel or explain the gospel. But of course, 
he doesn't have to. It is woven, reenacted right through the unfolding of this drama between two humans, Philemon and Onysius. So what of us today? What can we learn today? Well, firstly, let us use our reading today as a springboard into thanksgiving and praise and gratitude to Jesus for what he has done for us on the cross, paying the debt we could never pay, so undeserved, and gratitude to the Father who has made us sons, daughters in his household. Let's use it as a springboard into gratitude, a way of gospeling ourselves. But for each one of us, we are called to to flesh out this message uh, in our relationships, to forgive others as we have been forgiven. That is so challenging, isn't it? To treat others better than we deserve, to treat others with grace. This is part of our witness to the world uh, because how we model grace and forgiveness and love to one another in God's family reveals Jesus to the world. Amen. Uh, So enjoy your freedom in Christ today and live it out in community.